What's going on, everybody? For USA Muay Thai, my name is Nate Freeman. I'm joined today by the 2023 54 Kilo USA Muay Thai representative, Megan Washam. Megan, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? Cannot complain. Um, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, you competed in the um, USA National Championships, um, and you fought Summer Bronco. Um, you In the fight, you lost the first two rounds, but you came on strong in the third um, however, since Summer is um, under 23, she's going to be representing the under 23 division, and you're going to be representing us in the in the elite division. Um, go ahead and talk to us about your um, experience at the USA Muay Thai National Championships and um, about your experience fighting Summer and all of that. Yeah, um, the experience was amazing. I mean, it's such a well-run event. I think that you know, there across U.S. Muay Thai, I think there's like a huge variety of events and um, different quality of events. And this was definitely one of the best ones I've been at. Um, I really appreciated uh, the whole the whole team at uh, USA Muay Thai that worked to put it on. Um, there's obviously some unique challenges about the qualifier. Um, one is just there's so many unknowns, you know, like I haven't done a lot of tournament style fighting. So usually I know exactly who I'm going to fight um pretty far ahead of time you kind of know when you're gonna fight and when you're gonna need to make weight and all of those things so um this was definitely a new experience going in with a lot of those details unknown like until the kind of week leading up to it there were changes in the bracket you don't know who you're gonna be fighting um so really all i knew was that you know i was gonna have to fight an elevation and then i was gonna have to fight somebody that was obviously like a very skilled um skilled opponent um and that obviously ended up being true in getting to fight summer bronco um, I think that she's kind of been on my radar. Obviously she's been around us Muay Thai for a while now, even though she's a bit younger, I've really only been fighting for, um, training for three years, fighting for a little over two now. So, um, she was somebody that I kind of had on my radar as I made my way up the, uh, levels a little bit that maybe she would, um, be in my future as an opponent. So I was really glad to get the opportunity to, to fight her at the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so, you mentioned that you um, have only been training for, you, like you said, three years and been competing for two. Um, what does it mean to you to already, in such a short amount of time, be representing your country internationally in the world's biggest Muay Thai competition? It means, I mean, this is a cliche, but it means a lot to me. You know, I think that um, because it's been a short amount of time, I've feel like I've put in a lot of work in that amount of time. Um, and I've tried to kind of make up for lost years of not being involved in the sport um, through my training and just the time investment. Um, and then on top of it, I think more than anything, my goal going out there is to really make my coaches proud. Um, you know, I represent um, Wooden Man Gym with Jung Sunan and um, also trained my first year of Muay Thai under Saxon. And it's really important to me to always represent their style really well. And so my goal going out there this year was to really just show I should be competing at this level, um, win or lose. I think I, I showed um, strong technique and showed that I can compete um, really well at this level. And, and that was really my goal. Absolutely. Um, so you're going to be going back to Thailand. I know less than a year ago, you um, went over there and trained at Fairtex for a while. Um, go ahead and talk about that experience, first of all, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, training at Fairtex was absolutely amazing. Um, I think for anyone to go out there, Fairtex is a really strong gym, but especially as a female fighter, um, you know, they really have one of the largest, I would say, rosters of um, talented female fighters on um, on their their squad. Um, and so I went out um, with the intentions of fighting. I actually managed to avoid COVID for all of the pandemic until um, two weeks before my my fight out there. Unfortunately, I didn't get to fight, but um, I think that it was really monumental in accelerating my my journey. Um, I took, I think, seven full weeks off of off of work and um, then stayed out there and worked remote for another two while I kept training. And just to have that volume of training, I think the um, the level of people around you pushes you. Um, and I think that even more than the repetition, even more than the coaching and the training partners, I think that the intensity of the training 
um, kind of showed me that I can push more than I thought I could, that I can, um, you know, train more than I thought I could take on more volume than I thought I could, um, that my cardio can be better than I thought it could be. So coming back, I think, uh, really just the, the box that I put myself in for training had been expanded. And so then I was able to, um, try to push myself more, um, really every day since I've been back, but overall, yeah, the training partners and just the consistency of training while I was out there, I think accelerated my journey quite a bit. And you're going back um, here in May. Um, talk to me about um, what exactly you're excited about, um, not just for the competition, but returning to Thailand. Um, yeah, so returning to Thailand in general is obviously very exciting. I'm going to be able to go back about two weeks before the IFMA tournament, start, tournament starts and train out of Fairtex again. And then I'll stay after the tournament as well. Um I just the environment being out there, you know, it's it switches your mindset um, here in the US. I obviously invest a lot in training, but I also work full time at Google. Um, and, you know, it's just a lot of mental load to be working. I work East Coast hours. so I work six to two, leave work, go train, you know, strength and conditioning and I'm home maybe like at 8 p.m. and uh, go to sleep. So I think that just having that kind of mental load off taking the vacation and really focusing full time on training and um, is going to make me feel just even more prepared for, for the fight than I already do. Like, obviously my training here already has me confident, but I think getting those two weeks before if much to train in Thailand is really going to take it to the next level. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and you're a woman of many talents. Um, you mentioned that you work at Google and, um, you are a busy person. Um, we'll get into that more later. Um, but right now I want to hear about, how you found Muay Thai. I know that you were an All-American softball player in college. Um, so you had an athletic background, but um, how did you find out about Muay Thai and what made you start training at Woodman? And um, how did you get to where you are today? Um, yeah. So like you said, I played softball really my whole life. So I think I started when I was like seven years old and played all the way through college. Um, and after um, I graduated, I was I was done with my softball days. I was like ready to move on. But I definitely um, missed the, I would say, just inherent motivation that comes with being in a sport. So I stayed active after I graduated, but um, I really missed having a goal and working towards something. So I was kind of exploring uh, a lot of different <laughs> ideas of what I could do anyways. Like, I think I picked up tennis for a few months. I was like, maybe I'll do rock climbing, like sand volleyball. I was definitely searching for something, um, but really had zero interaction with the combat sports world. And then um, I was actually volunteering um, with uh, an organization in um, San Francisco that was kind of working with some of the homeless population here. And unfortunately, there was a person that was, you know, under the influence of drugs and probably not in their right mind. And they actually um, hit me while I was volunteering, like punched me. Thank goodness I, that he tried to hit me in the head and I turned around. So he hit me in the back and security took him out and all those things. And I think it was just um, kind of woke me up to maybe I'd been a little naive before thinking, you know, the city isn't the safest, but there's people around. So nobody would ever do anything in a crowd. And then it kind of just made me realize, um, unfortunately, you know, when uh, drugs are involved, like sometimes people aren't making, um, decisions based on logic. And so it made me lose my sense of um, safety and like security a little bit being around the city. So I started to think maybe uh, boxing or something like that. And then I was home in Texas, uh, right before the pandemic over the holidays, and just so happened to find a boxing gym near my parents house, which was Saxon Muay Thai in Texas. So I took my first class there. And then he actually told me, Oh, you live in SF, you should go train with my friend Jung Sunan. Uh, in San Francisco. So then, um, yeah, right before the pandemic in 2020 is when I first made my way to Wooden Man Gym. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so at what point did you, I know you had your first fight in November of 2020, um, is, if that's correct, and you won with a head kick. Um, at what point did you realize that you, I guess, were really good at Muay Thai and that you could compete and um, work your way to where you are today in representing the USA in Muay Thai? Mm -hmm. um, so when I was first starting to think about competing, um, 
Yeah, everyone around me was like, what is happening? Because none of my friends are really like in the, or previously, none of my friends were into combat sports. Like my parents knew me as a softball player. They knew I was competitive, but this was kind of out of the blue. Um, and what I kept telling everyone was, you know, I, I'm training so that I can learn self-defense. How can I know if this really works? Like, how can I feel confident that I can defend myself if I never test out the skills, right? So what I told everyone was I just want one fight to know that these are actually skills that I could use, you know, under adrenaline and if I needed to, and then I'm done. And so, you know, then I go out there and yeah, I just happened to get this head kick knockout that was the most magical moment of my entire life. And, you know, as soon as that happened, I was like, oh, this, <laughs> this is fun. Um, and at the same time, there was so much that I even in like the, the short amount of time of the fight that I felt like I could have done better, um, that I wanted to keep working on. And so then it was just that kind of the, the challenge of it that kept me coming back. Um, and honestly, I think it wasn't until recently that my mindset really shifted. And I think I started creating loftier goals for myself. I think something I've always been very cognizant of is I never, I think it's important to have stretch goals, but I never want to you know, think more highly of myself than, than what's accurate. <laughs> and so I think that I was a little bit careful at first to, to say, um, you know, that I have really big goals or that I want to go beyond team USA and, and all of those, those things. Cause I felt like I really needed to build a foundation and have more fights. Um, they kind of gave me a right to have goals that big. And I think it was maybe, um, after I got back from Thailand, I, I only had five fights at that point, And then I ended up getting four in a row at the end of last year and went on a solid win streak and was actually fighting better opponents that had more experience. And I think kind of at the end of that um, win streak at the end of last year is when I felt like, okay, um, I think that it's time for me to get, you know, set some bigger goals to, to go to the U S qualifier and um, to really see, you know, where I can take it. And what kind of confidence does it give you training at a place like Wooden Man um, alongside people that have been, USA Muay Thai representatives before, like Matt Baker, uh, mm -hmm. Ethan Ketchon. Um, Matt Cox is from Wooden Man, and he's going to be on the team. Um, so, yeah, what kind of confidence does that give you, um, knowing that you're training with a bunch of people who have had similar experience? Yeah, um, there are, like you said, I think something that's very unique about Wooden Man is we have a really solid fight team, both the people that you already mentioned and then even, um, you know, some – like other amateurs or people that do maybe like points more to but are very strong technically. Um, and I think that that's not something that everyone has is a, is a strong training team and different people can give you different looks in training. So um, there's kind of that technical aspect of it. And then um, like you mentioned as well, people like Matt, Ethan, Connor, even Ty, she's over at Fairtex, but she's originally from Wooden Man and um, <laughs> gives me amazing advice after all of my fights. Um, I just think that part of the culture in Wooden Man that gives me a lot of confidence, I think this comes from Jung Sunan, I think it comes from Nung Siam, and then it flows through the fighters that they um, have trained is just a culture of honesty. So I think that what gives me confidence is no one will ever be telling me I'm better than I am. They'll never um, kind of talk me up to myself or let me get a big head. Um, and that makes me know that they're going to make sure I'm prepared when I go into the ring. They're never going to give me a false sense of confidence. They're always going to keep it real. And I think that that allows me to know when they tell me I'm ready, I'm ready. And I don't need to question that. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'm also curious, um, was there anything from your time playing softball that lent itself over to Muay Thai that um, sort of helped you um, – get better at the sport quicker. I, I would imagine things like uh, as simple as it sounds like hand-eye coordination because softball and, and baseball take a lot of that, especially with hitting. Um, is, is that one of the things? And is there any other things that you took from softball that you um, have applied to Muay Thai? Definitely. Um, so I always tell people this and at first they look at me like, what? <laughs> There's no way that's true. But I swear the mechanics of throwing a kick in Muay Thai are so similar to the mechanics of swinging a softball bat. Um, and, and actually when I started out Muay Thai, I started out in an orthodox stance because I'm naturally right-handed. So in softball, I threw right-handed, but I was a left-handed hitter in softball. So after maybe a month or two of doing Muay Thai, it occurred to me, you know, like I, I was okay, but 
like a little uncoordinated and I'm just a little uncomfortable. So it occurred to me to maybe try switching to a southpaw stance. And that's when like the left kick really started clicking. And that was really, I think the first, um, the first strike that I started really understanding and that gave me, you know, a lot of confidence. And from there, it's just been expanding to other tools. But I think that just generic concept of weight transfer and rotation, you know, um, transfers really well from softball to Muay Thai. So in some ways, even though I've only been doing it for a little over three years, it feels like some of the mechanics I've actually been practicing, you know, for much longer than that. No, that makes perfect sense. I played baseball from the time I was like four all the way through high school. And um, yeah, the way you turn your hips over when you're when you're swinging, Mm -hmm. I I think that makes a lot of sense when you're throwing kicks as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, All right. So let's go ahead and talk about um, your job, your main job. Um, You work at Google, which is a lot of people's, I'd say, dream job. Um, that's just one of the organizations that people aspire to work for. Um, but tell me what exactly you do there and talk to me about your experience working for that company. Yeah, so um, I've worked at Google since actually before I graduated college. So I did a six month internship with them during my senior year of college and have been there ever since. So full time, I've been there for coming up on six years in September. So five and a half years, uh, the whole time I've worked on Google ads and I'm a product marketer. So I pretty much, um, help grow Google ads, help get small businesses to learn how to use Google ads and make it work for them. Um, and honestly, I, I really love my job. Um, I love the work I do, but even more than that, I love the people that I work with. Um, they're just, I've, I've never worked with someone there that I didn't, um, really enjoy both like professionally and personally. Um, and I love the work I get to do as well. Cause I think that I, I admire small business owners so much. And I think that it can be a very hard job and something I really respect about the teams that I've been on at Google is the focus is all about, you know, how can we help people really make their dreams, you know, to sound cheesy, but make their dreams come true and like make their businesses grow. And how can we really be helpful? So it's cool to be at a place that I feel like, um, you know, obviously like the company's making money, but there's also like a real focus on, you know, doing good and and trying to help people succeed in in entrepreneurship, which I think is really admirable. Is the workplace atmosphere, I know that you are not in the office all the time. You mentioned like when you were in Thailand that you um, worked remote, but when you're in the office, is it um, as, I don't think wild's the right word, but like there's just, so much stuff that you can do outside of work uh from what i've seen um is that actually the case like the nap pods and all of these um different things that you see in here um is that what it's like there uh yes and no i think like um before my internship at google my uh my my roommate who was gonna have the end or the same job as me um we watched that movie i think it's called the internship uh, about Google and, you know, then of course we're like, oh my gosh, what are, what are we about to get ourselves <laughs> into? Um, I think like the, the way to sum it up is the culture is all about like, how can we make it enjoyable to be at work so that you'll want to be here and like do your best work. Right. And I think that, um, I'm like a neuroscience and psychology nerd. So I think all, you know, all of, all of the research shows that people don't do their best work when their mind is like laser focused on a specific task a hundred percent of the time, right? Like sometimes our brain does its best work subconsciously. Um, so I think that the, the office and the atmosphere is kind of wired to facilitate like really focused work, but also, um, be an environment where you can, um, you know, do other stuff like grab food or go grab a snack or, you know, um, they're like ping pong tables, you know, (laughs) but I, I think the point is to just facilitate that kind of like subconscious, um, like, thought processes as well and to really facilitate creative work. Um, but yeah, the amenities are amazing and I, I won't downplay them. Like they're really great. The the food's amazing, although I can't eat it 90% of the time because I'm always having to cut weight, which is sad. Um, but, but yeah, it tastes great when I can't eat it. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, <laughs> um, so um, I feel like you mentioned that you're big into neuroscience. I feel like that goes very much hand in hand with marketing and your job um, and how 
um, you need to understand the mind behind um, whether it's a consumer or the mind of a business owner or anything like that. Is that sort of where that passion for neuroscience came from? Or is that just sort of a separate thing that sort of lends itself well to what you do? Or how how's that work? Um, I think it's, uh, I'm trying to think of really where it really came from. I mean, my mom is a, um, a marriage and family therapist. So I think like the psychology concepts have always been around. Um, and it's, I think it's just been, um, a common thread through a lot of interests that I have. Um, so I've studied, yeah, neuroscience and, um, behavioral economics and behavioral science for marketing. Um, I'm very interested in sports psychology and also, um, sports neuroscience. Like there's something called motor visualization, which is essentially the study of how, if we visualize not just for confidence, but actually visualize like how our muscles feel and how they activate when we do certain motions, it's actually shown to like essentially grow those neural pathways in your brain, almost as if you were doing the actual activity. So you can actually build muscle memory without doing an action if you know how to visualize it well enough. Um, and so it, yeah, there's just like a lot of different areas that um, I've, I've studied kind of how neuroscience fits in there. And I have a very far off dream of maybe one day going back to school and studying it, but we'll see. <laughs> And that also, I'm sure, plays a lot into, you mentioned the visualization visualization aspect, excuse me, of it. Um, I sh I'm sure that also plays well with um, training and with your career in Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's something that I try to pretty much schedule in my training regimen, just like I schedule in strength and conditioning and um, training, um, especially when I have a fight coming up. Um, but But really all the time, I'll try to even do like full on, you know, three, three minute rounds of visualization, like go through the entire fight in my head. Or if I'm struggling with, um, you know, a specific technique that my coaches are teaching me, I'll set aside like 10, 15 minutes in the day after practice to just go through it, you know, in my mind and kind of try to figure out how it should feel in my head. And then I find that it always translates um, the next day and really helps me, um, I think, like solidify those techniques a little quicker. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, all right, really quick, we'll go through just a few rapid fire questions um, just so people can maybe get to know you personally a little bit better. Um, first of all, what would be your favorite striking technique? Ooh, lately it's been the long knee, like left knee. It used, it used to be left kick, but lately long knee. Interesting, okay. Um, what is your favorite either book or movie? Oh, that's so hard. Um, <laughs> my favorite book, um, The Alchemist. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, what is your, um, when you're not cutting weight or not having to diet or anything, your favorite food? So this will offend a lot of people. The first thing that I eat after my fights is an entire large pizza by myself. <laughs> but I get my pizza without cheese because my favorite part is like a really good tomato <laughs> sauce. <laughs> and I'm like, the cheese covers up all the like the herbs and the flavors and stuff. So I get my pizza without cheese, which I've been told is just bread with tomato sauce, but I'm sticking to the fact that it's still pizza. <laughs> yeah, that just sounds like almost breadsticks, <laughs> glorified breadsticks. I don't know. I've heard that they actually eat it in Italy. So until someone proves me wrong. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's not, it doesn't sound bad at all, but it just doesn't, uh, I don't know, make as much sense. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. Okay. Um, if you had advice for a, uh, Megan from three years ago, who was just getting started into Muay Thai, what advice would you give her? Hmm. Um, I would say like, be a little bit less afraid to fail. Like, I think that now I'm willing to pretty much get in the ring with anyone and um, like losing doesn't feel like it means I can't achieve things. But early on in my Muay Thai career, I think because I started a little later, I almost felt like if I wanted to achieve anything great in the sport that I had to be just be like so far above average, right? Like I could never lose. I had to do everything faster. 
And um, now I just really think that's, you know, not entirely true. Like, I think that the longevity in the sport is a lot longer than I originally thought it was. People fight, you know, to a higher age than I originally thought they did. So I think I would have just like pushed myself a little earlier to, to be a little more challenged and to be okay with losing. And uh, yeah. You mentioned that and your fight against summer was your first career loss. Um, We're going back a little bit, but um, talk to me about how you've sort of dealt with that and um, where you are sort of mentally with that. I know that you've gotten the spot on the USA Muay Thai national team. So um, it worked out in the end, I guess you could say, but um, what, has been sort of the aftermath of, um, your first career loss. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the reason I lost is very similar to the reason that I've had some close fights before, which is that, um, sometimes I just, I think I haven't entirely figured out how to really unlock, um, the kind of like beast mode type of thing and just, (laughs) you know, forget about having, trying to have perfect technique, forget about, saving some of my cardio for the end of the fight and just really let loose. And um, looking back at that fight, I think, um, you know, Summer Summer definitely won that fight. But I think the second round, um, I was, I just should have let loose a little more, you know, countered a little bit more. Um, I think that my skill level um, was very similar to hers. I just think that she was more aggressive. And um, so I think, the thing that's positive for me on that takeaway is the reasons I lost are very much within my control and things that I can fix. It's not a lack of ability. It's just, um, you know, making the choice to challenge myself a little bit more and um, really not have fear of running out of steam or gassing out or getting hit and just, you know, have confidence and, and be a bit more aggressive. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so going back to the sort of rapid fire questions, I guess, um, who is your favorite Muay Thai athlete? And then if that's not your favorite athlete overall, who is your favorite um, athlete? Mm. Um, my favorite Muay Thai athlete. I really enjoy watching um, Superlek. I think his kick is absolutely incredible. Um, and he's just like lightning fast. Um, so really, really enjoy, um, enjoy watching him. Uh, and I also really like, uh, from the female side, um, Alicia from Phuket fight club. I think that speaking of being aggressive, she just goes in there and you can tell like no fear. She's just focused on her goal. And, um, I think has really great technique while being a very like forward fighter and aggressive fighter. So I feel like I watch that and try to learn a lot from just, I think the mentality that she brings into the ring. Um, Favorite athlete overall? Um, I grew up with one of my favorite athletes being Jason Witten from the Dallas Cowboys. I'm a Cowboys fan all the way. I'm from Texas. Uh, 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 yeah, I, I should have known you're from the DFW area, so that that makes sense. But I, mm. <laughs> that, and I'm sure you get that reaction a lot as a Cowboys oh, yeah, fan. Absolutely. But. <laughs> um, okay, so before I let you go. Um, three things, a, how can people follow you on social media? B, if there's a way that people can support you on your journey as you go to Thailand, whether that's, um, a lot of our, a lot of our athletes have like a GoFundMe or some of some fundraiser of some sort, um, or whether that's some other form of support. Um, and then three, I'll give you a chance to shout out any sponsors, coaches, um, teammates, anything like that. Yeah. Great. Um, so my Instagram handle is at Meg underscore wash, Meg wash. Um, so yeah, I try to post, um, training content, fight content, stuff like that on there. Um, supporting me, we're gonna do a t-shirt through wooden man. So I'll be posting about that, um, on my social media soon. Um, and then as far as, um, sponsors go, I'm sponsored by Satra, um, which is also one of my favorite gear and, um, apparel brands. So great shorts. They actually just launched new ones that I'm really excited to get. Um, and then, yeah, just my team at Wooden Man. So, um, Jungsanan, Nungsiam both invest so much in us. Um, and then Malia is the owner of the gym and obviously just the, uh, the whole team there. And then always, always loyal as well to my, uh, Saxon crew, um, who, who I started out with. I try to kind of combine both the styles and, and represent both of those legends really well. So. 
Absolutely. This has been Megan Washam. She, you can catch Megan um, in May at the FMA World Championships, competing in the 54 kilo division, um, representing our great country of the United States. Megan, thank you so much for your time and best of luck in May. Thank you.